And we are back for episode 23 of Journey to a Million, coming on Jared's post-birthday week here on the podcast. So, look, this is going to be a great episode here. We're covering the Dolphins of Miami and the Las Vegas Raiders. So, yeah, this should be a good episode here. We'll take a little break in between with our sponsor of this episode, Athletic Greens, of course. So, yeah, with that, let's get started right away here. So, we'll start again with the Miami Dolphins, but... Yeah, how are you guys doing? You know, it's full journey million squad. Like I said, Jared, the birthday boy, and then Zach Roush. So, how is everyone doing? Doing good. Doing great. Zach's doing great. So, talk about one upping Jared there. Look at that. So, yeah, Miami Dolphins. Let's talk about it. Let's go to this past season. You know, the off season. You know, there is. It was an interesting run, right? They go on that that losing streak, and then you go on a win streak there to end the year, but you miss out. On the playoffs, Brian Flores is out as head coach. And then there's a little, and then they move the case to arbitration, which is the news that we that came this past week. There was a discrimination case filed by Brian Flores himself. So uh, that's that's still a story going on throughout this offseason. But what do you guys think then of the Miami Dolphins 2021 to 2022 season? I mean, I'd give them a uh, solid C. I think that they started off, like you said, really bad. Uh, Tua got hurt, came back, and they went on like a seven-game winning streak, and they were looking like a uh, possible playoff team. Um, they ended up barely missing the playoffs, but yeah, I, I think that a C is appropriate grade for them. Yeah, I'll give them a C too. I mean, obviously they had that terrible start, and they came back on that winning streak, but they also really didn't beat a whole lot of good teams on that winning streak. So I've seen, I'd say they're probably one of the more improved teams this offseason. So it'll be interesting to see how they do this upcoming year. I was going C as well. So all of us are taking C's there, but like like I said, this was like we all said, this is a busy offseason done by the Miami Dolphins. And it starts from the leadership, right? Brian Flores, as we mentioned, out as head coach. Mike McDaniel, they bring in a guy and a lot of people have heard of before. And now look, he's in as the Miami Dolphins head coach. And Look, I, I call this, at least for, this is my opinion right now, head coach hiring of the offseason. I think this is the winner for me, Mike McDaniel. A great football mind coming, you know, right? Isn't he from the Shanahan tree? Isn't he yes. from with, with yes. that and over in San Francisco? So, look, he's going to be, I think, a great football mind. And I was already, you know, watching some of you know, his press conferences. And he's, he's excited to get to work. He was working with Tua right away. And. I remember they aired like his phone call on, on the plane or on the jet with um, Tua talking about how he's his quarterback. So I, that was exciting to see as well. But you know, what did you guys think of the Mike McDaniel hiring here at head coach? I mean, I think it's a solid hiring, obviously, coming from uh, the 49ers. Uh, I think he'll be a great leader for this team. Um, obviously, we I think we all thought that Brian Flores did. I mean, he wasn't a bad coach. I thought we thought that he should have stayed there. But, I mean, you got to get your guy and Mike McDaniel's – Going to do a great job, I think, for them. Yeah, I think it was a great hire, but also, does anyone really know why they fired Flores? I mean, is it like the whole losing thing that he said? But as I don't see why they would fire him. He was, I thought he was a great coach. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting thought. That was, I think, still the biggest, you know, news involving. I think the other head coaches that were let go or, you know, fired were, were kind of expected, right? Or, even that, so it was an interesting one, but um, hopefully, you know, Mike McDaniel can step into that job. But again, you know, Brian Flores, that, that might be a huge mistake there firing, firing him, considering that streak he's worn out. He had that five win season a couple years back with that Dolphins squad that maybe wasn't, you know, the best either. Like he's he hasn't had the greatest teams and he still put together solid seasons for, you know, maybe what, what he's, you know, what he's working with. So I think, I, I think, you know, once this discrimination lawsuit gets, you know, gets settled. I think we'll find him, you know, he, he's going to be coaching again. I know, I know he was willing to, you know, risk. He, he mentioned it. Even. He was risking his head coaching future, you know, for this lawsuit, right. To, you know, prove, prove his points there. But look, I think, um, I think we'll certainly, you know, see him as a head coach of another football team, you know, in the future. So uh, with that, let's talk, you know, some more moves than done, of course, by the dolphins here. They did a lot of ones. I think we'll start right away, right, with the biggest one, right? You go, you go out and you trade for your guy. You get two as you get two a number one receiver. You get him Tyreek Hill. You know, this was a move that a lot of people were surprised to see there. 
and they paid him right. So, look, I I think what did you guys think of the Tyreek Hill trade? Did you think it was an overpay? Right. Um, what are your thoughts, Zach? We'll start with you. I think after the Adams trade, which was I uh, was like a week or two before, I think they got a fair price on Hill, the same contract fair price. Um, personally, if I was a GM, which obviously I'm not, I don't know if I would have done that, but I think they felt that they need to get that clear cut number one weapon. Um, maybe that'll help Waddle too. And they went from probably one of the bottom 10 receiving corps to arguably top 10. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, I'm 75 million might be a little over. I mean, after you saw what Adams got, but um, yeah, Tyreek Hill coming in, they got their guy. Um, there's been a lot of people like fans that have been bashing on him going to the the Dolphins because obviously Patrick Mahomes, I think, has a stronger arm and a but is just better quarterback. He's been proven. Um, did but you guys, hold on. did you? I was going to say that. that. Did you see that? The highlight. Yes. Yeah, yep. that I was, was just going to say everyone's that. talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tua actually, um, Hill defended Tua. He put out his own. I just got a notification like a half hour ago. He put out his own highlight reel of practice, showing much better throws and uh, kind of like show that he was better than that first highlight reel showed. So, so their know. marketing team just sucks. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Zach, when you bring up GM, right, you're talking um, if you were the Dolphins GM because looking yes. at what the, you know, I know this is in a Chiefs offseason preview, right? But like looking at what the Chiefs did, I think, I think they did exactly what you need to do. Look, they're you know, a great football team, make great decisions there. And yeah, that Hill got that new extension, right? Four years, 120 million and 72.2 million guaranteed. Look, that's a, that's a, that's a payday right there. And, you know, it's tough always, especially, you know, a team sport, of course, like football to throw, you know, $72.2 million guaranteed and 120 million dollars overall at one player. So this is going to be an interesting situation in Miami, looking what they did there. I don't know on their end. You know, I, I get that they, they went out and got their guy, like Jared said. You know, this was an interesting trade look. Um, it, I think it ended up hurting them, kind of like what you mentioned too, Zach, with where the Packers um, and the Adams trade happens before. And then Tyreek Hill's like, I'm worth more than this. And then especially, you know, maybe value-wise too between the teams, you see five draft picks go in this, a first rounder in the, in the past draft, 2022 draft. And I don't know. It was an interesting trade for sure. I thought it was a lot, but... That, I mean, that's the price, you know, for a guy like Tyreek Hill. So that's just how it is. So anything else on here, Tyreek Hill, before we talk about some other moves? No. All right. So let's let's roll to some of the other moves they made. Wasn't the only one there. Look, they went out. They got Raheem Mostert. They got him. They got their running back. Um, they got Chase Edmonds, too. So it's going to be a crowded backfield here. For the Dolphins, I don't know what, what do you guys think. You know, fantasy wise, I think that's a story here. Who's going to be taking the carries? Uh, Gaskin's still there too, right? So, and they got Sony Michelle and Sony Michelle. So, four guys right there. Look, and obviously people get hurt, right? You know, there might be some scenarios that we don't know still about injury wise. But I mean, what? How do you guys think this four man backfield is going to operate? Fantasy wise, I am staying away. I think from all four of these guys. So, you know, that's just how it is. But what do you guys think here? I mean, I agree. You don't you don't take split backs, let alone having four backs there. I think Gaskin will get most carries, and then they'll have Mostert there as well. Uh, Chase Edmonds will kind of be like a like a, I think a third string, and then Sony Michelle will just be kind of you know there. Won't play that much, I don't think. But Mostert and uh, Gaskin, I think, will take most of the carries here. I think uh, with the new uh, regime coming in, obviously. Uh, McDaniels and Mostert have histories back from San Francisco. That's probably a big reason why he is in Miami. So I think that he's obviously going to get some work. But then I think Gaskin and um, Edmonds are definitely the most talented in that backfield. So I can see Gaskin getting maybe like the 5-10 touches game and then Edmonds getting that 10-15. to And then I think Mostert would probably get maybe like five, six carries a game unless he's having a big game. Yeah, this is going to be, you know, interesting. I think, I think that's like with Mike McDaniel again. I mean, he's going to he's gonna put together an offense that's going to put points on the board, get yards. I don't think it's going to be an offense that accrues fantasy points. You know, 
And that's just like, cause I think it's going to be so balanced. And I think that's going to end up hurting right fantasy owners, but you know, they, this, that's going to help this football team. So uh, that's going to be, you know, interesting. Look at Teddy Bridgewater also signed. So kind of your backup quarterback guy they get there. Um, you know, we saw other ones, uh, Armstead. Who's the, who's the tight end to have in this offense? Is it still Hill? I, I, the, what did you say? Right, wide receiver or tight think, end? It, wide receiver. I meant, yeah. Uh, I think it's still Tyreek Hill, still Hill. But I, I think Waddle maybe as a value guy in a one-year league, right? I mean, there might be some value there. I think because we always talk about what receiver, you know, benefits the most out of, right? And a, a, a guy coming in, you know, we'll talk, we'll be talking about that in the second half of the episode with the Raiders. That's always an interesting there one there with Renfro and Adams, but you know, you bring up a great point. Yeah. Waddle on a value play might be good here. Cause I know you said, you said tight end at first. I was thinking like Mike Gusecki, right? I mean, he still might be a solid guy. It depends on, you know, we see San Francisco, they utilize the tight end a lot. I don't know if we're going to see some sort of, you know, see that kind of in Miami as well. Maybe we'll see Gusecki get more involved in the end zone. So overall, I think, you know, first year head coach, it's always interesting to see how it works out. So it's, Always, you, you got to sit and watch, right? So, like with Matt Lafleur, right? We have to sit and watch, see how how it was going to work out, fantasy wise, especially, right? To be able to analyze, maybe see how it is. I'm more intrigued with those guys that you mentioned, like value guys, like that on a daily fantasy, you know, more of a daily fantasy lineup kind of thing here. So, overall, I think it's going to be a good thing to look at there. But yeah, Taron Armstead, uh, you you get him as well. You get your lineman. You get a guy to protect, to uh, get a tackle. So that's going to be that was a big signing there too. And like I said, they do get Gasicki back on that franchise tag. And, you know, overall, um, there's also Salvin Ahmed, too. You can't forget him. He was tendered. So there's running back number five. So I don't know if he's a guy. You know, now now we're getting pretty deep now in the overall the depth there for running back. But um, I guess for other moves, that kind of wraps it up there, guys. And um, go they ahead. did get Cedric Wilson as well oh, from the thank Cowboys. You. So I think what yeah, they like did over this offseason, yeah, what they did is they basically just tried, tried to strengthen Tua's weapons. They wanted to take that next step, so they brought in Hill. They got Wilson. They got their running backs, just weapons, and they're obviously their linemen. They got um, Armstead, like you said, Drew, just to like strengthen his kind of his game. So getting another weapon with uh, Wilson coming in is going to be. It might not be the biggest move of the offseason, but it's going to help them a lot because Wilson is coming off as probably his best uh, year in da- from Dallas. There we go. Uh, Zach, you got anything to add there before we talk about the draft for them? Nope. Obviously, they really didn't have first round pick. They traded for Hill. So, drafts an interesting, you know, not, yeah. I mean, interesting, not. Uh, it's four picks, uh, round three, round four, two round seven picks. So, they pick overall, you know, at 102, 102 overall. They take Channing Tindall out of Georgia. So, another linebacker there out of Georgia goes. And, you know, looking through it, they get a wide receiver in fourth round, Eric Uzikma, Uzikanima uh, out of Texas Tech. Cameron Good. And then Skylar Thompson are the other two guys who go in the seventh um, round. And Skylar Thompson being a quarterback out of Kansas State. To include that there, Cameron Good, a linebacker out of California. So um, it was UC Berkeley, by the way. So looking at that... Um, Anything, you know, else there with that draft? I mean, again, not much there. That was, they had one of the, you know, um, draft-wise, you know, not one of the least exciting drafts, you know, based on the, the moves they made, right? So that's just how it well, is. Kind of like a Rams draft. Yeah. And it was just, okay, that was just the draft, right? So not exciting there, four picks only. But look, we'll talk about the schedule. It's getting full disclosure released right now while we're recording, so. I'll do my best to include as up to date um, schedule as I have, but currently, yeah, I don't have really all the up to date stuff. So I'll read them. And are you guys ready to yep. do our prediction challenge here for the Miami Dolphins? All right, here are the 2022 to 2023 Miami Dolphin opponents. So here they are: at Baltimore, at Chicago, at Cincinnati, at Detroit, hosting Buffalo hosting New England, hosting the Jets, hosting Cleveland, hosting Pittsburgh, hosting Green Bay, hosting my Minnesota, going to New England, going to New York to play the Jets, going to Buffalo, going to LA to play the Chargers, 
hosting the Texans and then going to San Francisco to play the 49ers. So that game there, Mike McDaniel can get a, a little revenge win there. So Jared, we'll start with you. What do you think the Miami Dolphins are going to do this in this upcoming year? Um, I got them at 10 and seven. I think that they're going to finish second in their division behind the bills. I think they passed the, the Patriots and I'm not too high, even though the jets had one of the best uh, drafts. I don't think they're anywhere come like close to this. I think they get fourth. So I got the Dolphins finishing second with 10 and seven, sneaking into maybe a, maybe a six seed and maybe a five seed into the playoffs, but it, the AFC is stacked. That is a tough schedule. It is. I'm going to go with, uh, Six and eleven. Wow. <laughs> hey, no, but I mean, it goes consistent with your Jets pick. It, it does, does. There, I'll give you that. But... I think I think they go five and one. They're one and five in the division. Get oh. swept by the Jets. Swept by the. You think Bills the Patriots? I, beat them I, twice? I can't go that low. You no, went six and eleven, Zach. <laughs> you went six and eleven. Wait, you think the yeah. Patriots beat them twice? You think the Jets beat them twice? I don't Jets. look. Some teams the Jets gotta are going to sell her in that. You Look, think the Jets, Jets are going to sweep the Dolphins? Wins for the Jets. Yes. No. Yeah. This I'll is two go. Of them. Wow. Look, it gets tough here, right? I mean, I think that that division in, in whole, you know, for spots two through four, I think that's going to be a gauntlet. I think those teams are going to be very close game wise. So I, I'm not going to go six and eleven low. I I am debating around seven, ten, eight, and eight, and nine. And I I personally, you know, Patriots they could potentially finish last in this division if you look at it. That's how I. I have them placed last right now. Yeah. If yeah. I had to make yeah. prediction standings right now, I'd have them last. Yep. And that's that's going to be an interesting story. But I will go eight and nine. So I'll go two games better than Zach here. I think, you know, again, this is this is the first year of the coach, a little transition year, I think. I I still think, you know, this Dolphins team, I think they have the potential, you know, to do big things. But look, the Bills are going to be tough. I don't think the Jets are going to do better, Zach, than them. They might finish. They're going to, I, you know, maybe seven wins, maybe six. Well, but. Drew, what, what I saw here is like, didn't they go eight and nine last year? I think they ended up eight they went and nine, nine and eight. Nine and eight. I don't yeah, think they, they got well, sig- significantly better at, on their team. I don't think they go anywhere their schedule got worse than last year. Harder as well. They won the it, toughest schedules, though. It did, but I don't yeah. see them going one, one and five in the division. I think they go three and three, maybe four and two. I think, I think eight wins is generous games. in the schedule. I think they lose both games to the Bills, but I think they take both from the Pats and the Jets. They play the Packers. Jared, I mean, they play. Pats, yeah. Jared, look at yeah. their uh, look at their wins last season. I know they were bad what teams. I, wins I, I know, have. I know, but they got a lot they better. They beat the Ravens, so. who were all beat up. I wouldn't think that they go. They do that bad. They were almost a playoff team last year, and they got a lot better. So. I think they missed the playoffs by quite a bit this year. Yeah, no, like they we'll beat. See. I, I'm looking through it. Right, they beat the Patriots. They beat them. They beat them twice. But other than that, you know, they beat up a banged up Ravens squad. They beat the Texans. Like, I mean, there's, you know, the the Jets, like last year, they beat the Saints without with Ian Book starting. I think there's some, you know, question marks there. But I certainly think this team is, you know, after this transition year, I'll call it, I think this team might be up on the rise. You know, I'll I'll say that. So I'm not necessarily ruling them out right away, but go ahead. Are you guys, uh, do you guys trust Tua? I do. I was just going to say that. I think Tua has a breakout year, and I think... Uh, I don't No, I think he leads his team to second place in the division. Yeah. I think he's going to be like a Jimmy G. He's going to yeah. be like an he's... average quarterback. He's not going to do anything great. His team's going to have to win games, and he just can't I mess was gonna, up. I was going to go Jared Goff, Zach. So we were kind of you know on the same <laughs> comparison level. Well, Zach uh, thinks that Zach Wilson's going to have his um, uh, this amazing year, so we'll see. I mean, we all have different opinions, I guess. Okay, by Zach Wilson's amazing year, he's got more upside. Like top fifteen, yeah, yeah he's got they're more both, upside. They're both Tua. very young. You can't say that Tua's got more weapons. He does. I mean, he does. Yeah, but, but... I, I still think that upside's higher with Wilson. But that's going to be you know an interesting situation in Miami. So to wrap things up here, you did hear our records there. You know, Zach, of course, still has those Jets. Over them, and I'm uh, sticking to it. With that, here we're gonna we're gonna take a little break, and then when we come back, we will be talking about the Las Vegas Raiders. I was recently introduced to AG1, and wow, if you're someone like me who hates taking pills and vitamins, wants more energy, and wants a more optimized immune system, let me tell you why this is the perfect supplement for you. 
So what is this stuff, you may ask? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's all those things. And look, this is the perfect thing to start your morning routine, start your day off right with just one scoop of AG1 with some water. And let's talk about AG1. What makes it so great, you may ask? It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, right? And it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And let's talk about the price, right? You might be asking about that. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance, and with that, you know, that's going to save you money, right? It costs you less than $3 a day while you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit, which I do have. I do love my coffee, but uh, talk about what the founder did here. He created... Athletic Greens, after experience how difficult it was to create an optimal nutritional routine on your own, and I can attest to that it is extremely difficult on a day-by-day basis. Athletic Greens, they also have over 7,000 five-star reviews, so you know you are getting the best when it comes to Athletic Greens. And also, they're a they're climate-neutral certified company, so you know they care about the environment. And for every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. And right now, it is just time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Look, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one year supply free of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash emerging, A-T-H-L-E-T-I-C-G-R-E-E-N-S dot com forward slash emerging, E M E R. G-I-N-G. And that is to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Episode 23 resumes on the podcast as we have our second team on now. The Las Vegas Raiders will be covering. Uh, We just had to take a little break there as Zach and Jared had to continue the debates over, you know, how are the Dolphins going to do? So that was always good to hear. Uh, We came to consensus 7 and 10. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll move on there. But yeah, the Las Vegas Raiders, let's talk about it. They had quite the off season, but first they had, you know, quite the regular season as well. And, you know, overall, how would you guys rate the Raiders season on for the 2021 to 2022 season? So Jared, we'll start with you again. What'd you think? I said I give them a B minus. I think they made the playoffs. Um, although we didn't want to see them really make tie. the playoffs, we wanted the tie. But uh, it was there. Some enemies. They, they still right made the playoffs. They would have, yeah. But you know, everyone wanted to see the tie. Um, obviously a decent season. They beat the Colts when they needed to because you know Colts choked. Um, and then they beat the Chargers in overtime, like we saw. So yeah, made the playoffs, but then they lost first round, obviously. So disappointing in the playoffs, but just to make it is kind of a step in the right direction for this team. So I gave them a B minus. I'll give them a B. I think they're kind of that fringe playoff team coming into the season. And then at the end of the season, you really saw Derek Carr step up. And a lot of people kind of realized how good of a player he actually was. I think they could build on that this coming season with their new uh, star, Devontae Adams. You know, I would go F just because they didn't kneel it in the in that game. But, you know, I'll go B. Again, they, they, did, they did exactly what they wanted to do, right? They knocked a division rival out of making the playoffs. But they could have just kneeled it, right? They wouldn't have had to worry about it. They could have they ruined their chances. I've done the ramp before. You know, they could have threw that pick six. They could have fumbled it. They could have done something like that. But whatever, they made the playoffs. But they should have been a tie. But uh, they lose it by seven only to the eventual, you know, AFC champs in the Cincinnati Bengals. So overall, you know, I'd, I'd go with the B, right? And then they only get better now this upcoming year. So I think a solid year, right? You know, uh, for for Ra- Raiders fans, you know, and then they have that new beautiful stadium too. So they played in last year. And look, uh, let's talk now about that offseason they, they had. 
you know, we'll start with the biggest move, right? You go out, you, they got their guy. I mean, we just talked about it, right? Both these teams have a common theme. They went out, they went out and got their guy in the first step, right? They go out and get, you know, Green Bay Packer, former Green Bay Packer wide receiver, Devontae Adams in that trade. I don't know uh, what you guys thought of that trade, right? I think, you know, for the Packers, we've talked about this, right? You know, getting anything for Devontae Adams was a plus, and that was a good, I think that was a good trade for Green Bay. But look, also, you got to look at what, the Raiders did they paid their guy and you know Devontae Adams is gonna be a Raiders. So what were your thoughts on that move? Zach. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like the move for the Raiders. I'm still reuniting Carr and Adams. But the only thing is they paid Carr and Adams this offseason and they equate for about I think it was like 70 million of the 208 million cap space or something. So almost a third of their cap space is going in two people. I don't know how you can build a Super Bowl contender with that kind of cap space. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Adam's got sixty-seven million guaranteed. That's a lot there. Obviously, five-year deal. Um, they got their guy. Obviously, they wanted Adams, and the Packers obviously weren't going to be able to pay as much for him because he wanted to go to the Raiders. Obviously, roommates with Carr and not in college. Not much you could have done to keep him in Green Bay. So obviously they went up and got their guy. And I mean, I like I, I like the move for the Raiders and I like it for the Packers now that I thought about it because, I mean, both teams win here, I think. Yeah, I think a win-win trade is a great way to describe that one overall. And look, also you go out and get Chandler Jones, who I, is very underrated, right, out of, you know, from the Cardinals. And, you know, he's been dominant, I mean, these past few years. And now having him with Max Crosby pair those two, I mean, that's a lethal one-two punch there. I think that's going to make this team dangerous here. And overall, you know, I, I like that move as well. They also went out and got a new D coordinator, right? Patrick Graham is that new guy there. So that's going to be, you know, have a new guy with that defense, having Chandler Jones. Overall, I, I like this defense. I think this defense is going to be a nice, a, a solid defense in the AFC, and I think that, that might propel them here, you know, to that playoff run. But – uh what overall, what did you guys think of getting Chandler Jones then as your as another guy, another edge? I like the move. Obviously, it allowed them to trade Nick Akwe for Rocky Scene. So that kind of helped them with the secondary as well. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good signing. Um, like you said, Zach, uh, getting giving away a unique like that to the Colts. Um, not much value coming back, I don't think, because Rocky Seen, although he was obviously had like one of his best years, he's not been that player that you go out and get. He's just kind of a small piece, and I don't he's like solid. that trade. He's a yeah. solid player, but I don't, I don't like the trade here, say for the for the Raiders, just because I think Ngakwe is a great edge rusher, but they did end up getting their guy anyways, so it made sense after. But he'll be a solid player, I think. Yeah, this team is looking, you know, solid top to bottom. Uh, Talking then about you know the draft as well. Was there any other offseason you know moves you want to talk about, like signings there? Because there I mean, they, other they than those guys, new head coach. Yeah, yeah, with Josh McDaniels obviously coming from uh, New England. They should have kept Drew Passaccio. Passaccio, that's what I thought. Yeah, I think we all thought that he deserved all, that job. Yeah. Writing those letters right to each player that was that was yeah. a great moment there on social media. But hey, not but complaining because okay, Packers, Packers got him. Got him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Jared's like, oh my Colts. Eh. So, well, actually, with Colts, I mean the whole beef with Josh McDaniels and uh, Frank Reich. I don't know if you guys saw that. How like nope. jo- Josh McDaniels was supposed to be the Colts' next head coach before Frank Reich, mm. and uh, he ended up saying, "No, I don't want to play for the Colts. I don't want to like be the coach of the Colts." So then, when we beat the Patriots last year, it was kind of like a you know rub it in your face kind of a moment. So it was a win for the Colts, but. I'm sure Josh McDaniels will do fine for the Raiders. Yeah, I think I think he he will do just fine as well. But talking draft, uh, they actually they had more selections right than the Dolphins, but still not many. They had not by six. Much. Yeah. So looking at that, um, they had a third rounder here. So they they went offensive lineman in it. They went they got Dylan Parham out of Memphis. So that was that first guy they got. And then they got Zamir White out of Georgia. He had another bulldog going. Neil Farrell out of LSU, a D tackle. And, you know, those three, I'll just read those three there. Um, other guys, um, 
or fifth rounder or two seventh rounders, right? A D tackle, an offensive lineman, and a running back. So overall, you know, not not really that exciting here in the draft, right? When you have your first picks a third rounder, but maybe they can turn these guys into something, right? Zamir White might be an interesting story there with the fourth round pick getting your running back. I don't know what Actually, you guys think about Josh Jacobs, you know, his future. I mean, they didn't pick up his fifth year option. So, so I guess that kind of says something. Yeah. So I, what I'm saying, you know, Zamir White might be that that guy to be that long term replacement here. Dynasty value. I, I think there's some dynasty value here. Is all I'm saying. And For I know sure, we're yeah. all in the same dynasty league, but you know, Zamir White. I mean, Drew's gonna draft him first round. <laughs> maybe, maybe you never know. I don't disclose who I'm drafting, even though Zach is behind me. Because trust me, if Zach knows who you draft, he's a he will he will it do things to make you. sure you cannot draft them. So I got some. Uh, trade pieces available yeah yeah but um overall i guess i want to more talk about before we get into record predictions i want to talk about i think the fantasy values for these this team is intriguing i think overall how this team's going to play right we do you know josh mcdaniels we're going to see i'm interested to see what we're going to see so um overall i guess i want to start with you know josh jacobs what are we going to see you know last year probably as a Raider, I guess, fantasy outlook. Are you guys looking looking Josh Jacobs away here in this offense? I mean, he's probably still going to obviously be their number one running back, so he's still going to get his carries, but obviously not as high as he was previous years. I'd say he's a great running back two on a team, maybe yeah. a, a low-end running back one if he needs to be. But I would, obviously, if it's my second running back, I would think about getting him, but I'm going to take other options, obviously, before him. I've never been a fan of Josh Jacobs. I don't know if I've honestly ever had him on one of my fantasy teams either, just because I've seen too many of his games where he'll have 20 carries for 110 yards, but no receptions, no touchdowns. So what goes from like a good game translating to fantasy is nothing great. So I just, I've never been a big fan of him, and I think his value probably goes down. Well, I see Kenyon Drake is still there to get the receptions and stuff. That too, right? And you don't know how he's going to be worked in this offense, right? We talked to yeah. head coach, Josh McDaniels. If we start seeing him, you know, in the passing game a little, I mean, PPR value is going to go through the roof. I think that's going to be a story yeah. for Jacob's game if we see that. But the other story, you know, there's three guys I point to. Uh, Darren Waller, right? Your tight end. They're, they're tight end. And then you got Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro. And I am interested to see how that works with Renfro. Like, right, we've talked about this here on the podcast before. Does it help or hurt Hunter Renfro now, Devontae Adams being that number one receiver? You know, still Darren Waller. We talked about Darren Waller last week. I mean, there's a lot of questions here. How do you assess the situation here, Jared? I think we covered this. I mean, I think Adams only helps Renfro's situation the other way around, too. And I mean... Adams takes up their best defender on whoever team they're playing, and then Renfro can be that second option that might have better games than Adams or even Darren Waller. I think he's going to stay with the Raiders, it looks like, this year. Um, obviously a great option there as well. So I think they got three people here, three uh, two receivers and a tight end. That can be great options for Carr, and uh, I think it'll work out pretty well. I think it hurts. I think Adams' value definitely goes down from last year. Um, just because even though he does have chemistry with Carr from college. I mean, it's, it's a better quarterback, be, yeah. Yeah, you get a quarterback downgrade. You don't have the – like, Rodgers is top of the line in ball placement. Obviously, Carr is still good. He's a good quarterback. But they have that chemistry has – it has a gap, and Carr is a little downgrade. Also, I, I don't think Adams is going to get the target share he had in Green Bay. So I think he's going to get less targets, but then, I mean, they have to share targets, right? So you have to have Renfro and Waller yet. I think Waller is probably going to get some less targets as well. And same with Renfro, but I think it's going to open the offense up more for Renfro and he might get a better, like, yards per reception compared to last year. So he might be – kind of get those longer receptions and um, more chunk plays. I, I want to throw in like an MVS kind of role for him. I, I think, you know, maybe obviously with greater, you know, target wise, but I think he's going to be exactly what you mentioned, Zach, that, that, you know, that, that rack guy, right? He's going to get, he's going to be that kind of guy, I think, in this offense. But 
what my question, you know, is red zone. Who are they going to? I mean, you got Jacob. You still got Jacobs, Drake. Um, and then, of course, is Adam still going to be that red zone target that he was like in Green Bay? Like, you don't know. And it all depends, of course, with Josh McDaniels, what kind of game plan, what kind of red zone offense is going to be ran there. But look, this is going to be an interesting offense. This is going to be another great story. I think both the teams we chose are going to be two of the most interesting offenses to watch in year one for these new head coaches. So I mean, with that, you guys, any, any other fantasy outlook for any of these guys? Do you I mean, think Derek Parr can get 40 passing touchdowns? I, th- I think he does. I actually do think he does because I think he does too. I think Bernie mentioned this last episode. It's just, it's that factor where you're trying to shove the ball down Adams throat at green Bay. And it's just not there in, in uh, Las Vegas. You got Renfro is going to be that second option for Adams. And like, if you need, I still think, like you said, Drew, I think I still think Adams gets all the targets in the, in the red zone for like one-on-one, just throw it up and he'll catch it. But I mean, if they start predicting that you still got Waller, who's a big guy who can catch, you know, red zone targets there and get some touchdowns and then Renfro is just there as well. So I think that he, Carr will get around 40. I think he'll pass that. I can see him in like the 43 to 45 range. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I guess if you look at the weapons he has this year and, you know, he uh, like we've talked about, I mean, he's a solid quarterback. It's not like, very, I mean, I, I know he's been pushed to the point of where he's been called so much oh, underrated. It's getting to the point where it's almost overrating. If you know what I mean, but um, I still he's a solid quarterback nonetheless. So that's going to be a, a good story I think for this team in the AFC West. But this is where it gets fun. I mean, talking record predictions. Uh, this is you know AFC West. We've talked about it. one of the most interesting divisions here. So with that, I mean, are you guys ready for the record prediction challenge? Yeah, this will be interesting. This will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here are your 17 opponents for the Las Vegas Raiders in the 2022 to 2023 season. They give me the Hall of Fame game that they're in. They're, they are in Canton for that game. It's preseason, uh, so this does not count. But that's Thursday, August 4th at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern on NBC against the Jaguars. Just want to throw it out there. It's not one of the games. Here are your 17 games now. At Denver, at Kansas City, hosting Denver, hosting Kansas City. Hosting the Chargers, hosting the Texans, hosting the Colts, hosting the Cardinals, hosting the 49ers, going to LA to play the Chargers, going to LA to play the Rams, going to Tennessee to play the Titans, going to Seattle to play the Seahawks, hosting the Patriots, going to New Orleans to play the Saints, and going to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers. So another, you know, tougher schedule here. Both these teams. Zach, you're starting. Nine and eight. Yeah, that makes me feel a lot better about mine. All right, go ahead, Jared. You're going to say like six and 11 or something. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yet. I'm not. I'm going to say seven and 10. I think we talked a lot of good good stuff about this team, but I still have them finishing fourth in the division. Obviously, Chargers, Chiefs, one and two, I think, and Broncos are right there with Russell Wilson. It's going to be a, a tough division, and I got seven and 10 as my record. Yeah, this is, as you mentioned, a tougher division here. Look, I don't know. I... I've been going back and forth with this one. I still, I think in a seven to 10 win range is where I still put them. And look, they go 10, seven last year. Um, I wanted to push them into my playoffs, but again, I don't know if, if I can, I mean, I know I started, said start of the episode, potential playoff, right. You know, potential playoff squad might push them in, but I think they're going to be just close. You know, they're going to just miss it here this year. I will go nine and eight. I know that might be a little high here, but um, I still think they can split some of these divisional games. So I think that the playoff team here would have to go win 10 to 11 games. I think the yeah. AFC is just that so, stacked. So. Oh, exactly. So they might miss it out, miss out here this first year. But I, I think this team won't be left out of the playoffs in, you know, in, the, all, in all three, four years, you know, in this upcoming. But and overall, I mean, our predictions out, this wasn't as, you know, bad as last one. But, um, I think some team is going to have to fall in that division. I don't know. I don't know that Bronco. We haven't done the Broncos yet. I don't yet, think Chiefs are winning that division. I got Chargers winning the division. I got Chargers. I got Chargers too. But well, so You probably have Chargers. Don't share your record now. Please don't. Please don't. We'll say that for another episode. <laughs> I just think the Raiders' schedule is just brutal. It, it sounded like really tough. They start off playing the Chargers well, and Chiefs to start. 
Um, th- this isn't, or is that what the it's schedule? It's not in order because the schedule's not out yet. My, mine's okay. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. True, but they got their I division mean, is Chargers, Chiefs, Broncos. That's yeah. six tough games. That could be. That could be a one and so, five, two and four. I, mean, I think. I think it's a two and four, or three and three. I mean, I'm, that I might be. I might be a little yeah. generous, but I think it's something um, like that too. New Orleans, yeah. I think they can beat. I think they meet New England. I mean, there's Seattle, right? I mean, there's six. There's six. Yeah, six or so wins right there. I Houston think at like seven. Arizona. Mm-hmm. I, haven't been Arizona. I can get to nine wins with this. I could honestly still see them beating the Colts too. It's going to be tough, yeah. but I, I I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, this for That'd me is game. yeah. <laughs> I like where our predictions are at for this squad. So, um, with that, so right? How would you, uh, how would you rank the uh, the rosters in the AFC West? Like for as future outlook, right or as of right now, like this year, as of right now, I mm. think Chargers still won. Um, Charger, yep. Yeah. But I'm not putting Chiefs at two. Obviously, not even close. I think Chiefs might be four. I think Raiders could be the second best roster. They got the weapons. They got top to bottom. Need. Yeah, and then and then Broncos three maybe or Chiefs three. I Broncos could go Broncos four. two. I go Broncos two solely based on the the defense. Or I still like I I like the Broncos defense thing like more. I like than... the Broncos defense, but they they lost some pieces in the secondary and. Shelby Harris is a bigger loss than a lot of people think. Yeah, I agree with that. So, where you would put, would you put the uh, Raiders ahead then of the Broncos? I would probably. I think they're very close. I think, you know, I think those two are just a I hair think apart. Chargers are probably first. And then it's. Yeah, yeah. Chargers. I think the other three are really close. I'd say I'd Chargers, say... Raiders, Broncos, Chiefs. I got I'd Chiefs at the bottom, but I think Raiders, the others. Chiefs, Broncos. It's not like there's this massive gap by any means no, against no, any no, two no. through four. Two through four are right by each other. I think, you know, it's one, and that's like 2A, 2B, 2C. I think that's a fair way to assess, you know, this AFC West. But oh, this is the biggest question because I could easily see in this division, I could see the, I could see the Raiders being, you know, they could finish second or third in this division. I could see the Broncos. You know, I, I mean, I, I think two through four, I think I could see any of those. I still think we see the Chiefs make the playoffs. I still think they're going to be. Yeah, you I know, think they're going to make it. I think you know, they, they have to, right? <laughs> but I think, you know, I think it's a matter be between the Broncos, Broncos and Raiders. Yeah, and Broncos and Raiders between those two, you know, fighting for that last spot, I think. And I, I do think, I, I do agree. As of right now, I'll say the Broncos get that spot. But I, I don't think you can I count think, the Raiders. I think the last spot will be the Broncos, Raiders, and then the Ravens and um, Bengals. It'll be a fight. You yeah, think, I, wait, wait. You don't think the Bengals are making the playoffs? I don't. Well, There's I a lot of talk. Fighting, like the three AFC West teams that don't win the division, and then the Browns and the or the Bengals and the Ravens are going to be fighting for the wild card spots, and then okay. maybe like the Titans. I was going to say Titans. The Jets, you know. <laughs> okay. Raise okay. again. Move on there, but. To talk about next week, what we're going to be doing, a little scheduling here. Episode, we got 62 of Drew's Sports Crew. That will be Monday, of course, EWC Breakdown. You know, it'll be May 17th, that Breakdown Tuesday. And then Journey to a Million Friday episode, it'll be 24. We're planning to do Browns and Buccaneers right now, so that'll be a fun episode. Talk about Sean Watson and his impact this first year. In Cleveland, and then also talk about Tom Brady returning. What do you think out of the Bucks in the NFC? So, uh, with that though, you guys have anything else here to wrap up? No, no, sure. Live show June third again, twelve twelve Sports Pub and Grill. That's in Oshkosh. All the information is on our Instagram, Jordan Drew underscore Sports Crew, or on Facebook, Jordan Drew the Sports Crew. So, yeah, you know, I just wanted to shout that out there. I mean, that's the biggest big news that we had come out this past week. You know, here on Journey to Millions. So. Uh, again, you know, check that stuff out. If you're interested, please come on down. We have free stuff. We're giving away excellent food. They're posting their food right now on their Instagram pages, the 1212. Incredible. Their pizzas, smoked wings, sweet potato fries. I mean, it, the list goes on. I mean, it's incredible stuff. Again, live show. We'll be giving out free prizes for trivia. Yeah. We will be Even announcing. If you're not interested good. in the show, come for the food. Come for the food. Yes. Uh, we're announcing, you know, logo, rebranding, the whole thing. You know, we're getting the rebranding. We call Jordan and Drew the sports crew no more. Drew's sports crew, and we have a new logo we're unveiling with that. So look at look out for that. And yeah, that'll wrap it up here. So thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Jordan and Drew the Sports Crew, the journey to a million, the perfect 
podcast for you.